Saturday morning, time for the Experts Program. Luis Alvarez, CEO of the Alvarez Technology Group, on the line with us. Good morning, Luis. Good morning, Mark. How are you? Doing pretty good. Are you going to get out on the bay this weekend? I'm hoping to sail on Sunday. We have a, uh, a memorial race for one of the uh, one of the sailors in the yacht club that uh, unfortunately passed away quite young a couple of years ago from cancer. And so every year, he was a beloved individual, and so we do a, a race in his honor. So cool. Um, looking forward to that. So were you guys out on Wednesday night? Because I looked out on the bay and I saw just a ton of little boats out there. It was very light wind, so not a whole lot of healing. If you saw us, we were very upright most of the time. Right. But yeah, I was out there. Hey, there was something I wanted to ask you before we get to the regular topic, which is about how October Cybersecurity Month, Awareness Month, we had talked last week about cable TV and how you can get rid of that fee for the set-top boxes by going directly into your new modern television set, either with a LAN cable or using a Wi-Fi connection connection to stream your TV channels because all the big cable TV providers, well, you can be cableless essentially, mm-hmm. right? You can pick it up over the net. I was thinking, how fast of an internet connection do you have to have at home to be able to reliably stream that? Great question. So the recommended minimum is 25 megabits download, okay, which is below what most Comcast, the lowest end Comcast, I think is 50. Mm-hmm. So if you are using at and UVerse, I think their lowest is like 15, something like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, 25 is a recommended minimum because the assumption there is that not only are you going to be streaming, but you're also going to be using other devices on the internet. They want to give you plenty of bandwidth. Okay. But the, the rule of thumb is if you already have something like Netflix or Hulu and that's working fine, then streaming uh, Xfinity is not going to be a problem. If you still have DSL, even if you have a faster DSL, you may still want to stay with a connected connection because if you, let's say you have a couple people watching TV. Let's say you decide to convert your TVs over this way and you only have like, I believe maximum DSL is 75 megs down, right? Mm -hmm. So with two TVs, would you conceivably be taking up 50 of your 75 megs? No, because again, it's not taking up the entire bandwidth. It's just more of a a suggested threshold given everything else that's going on. Mm -hmm. Typically the streaming bandwidth is very low. It's somewhere south of of three megabits. Okay. But they just want to allow for everything else that you might be doing in your house. All right. Now, let's say I've got a TV next to my router. Instead of having the TV pick up the Wi-Fi signal, I could just run a short LAN cable from the router to the TV. Would it be better to do it that way? Absolutely. You're gonna get, the signal's going to be much more stable. Um, you're not going to get any sort of interference or any sort of issues with other SSI, you know, other Wi-Fi close by interfering with your signal. Sometimes what happens is if you have other people, especially if you live in, in an apartment building or you know in a dense community, a lot of these signals will cross paths. Has, and they each have to find their own their own radio space that they can occupy in and of themselves. And sometimes that changes and, and you'll see that as kind of a blip on your connection. They scurry for whatever uh, band they can find that, that's uh, unique to themselves. All right, let's move on to cybersecurity awareness. That's the theme for the month of October. What should folks be thinking about and what's the latest? The reason we have uh, National Cybersecurity Awareness Month is to give people a moment to think about what they're doing to protect themselves, to protect their businesses and really force yourself to think about, am I doing everything I need to do? Should I be doing more? What's my company doing? How good do I feel about what's going on? You know, cybersecurity is a a ever evolving thing. It gets worse, not better in terms of the threats that are out there and and the skill set that the bad guys have talked in the past about. Gone are the days where hackers just did it for fun. Now they do it for profit. And there's a lot of money to be made. 20 years ago, cyber hacks weren't something that made money. Now it's a multi-billion dollar business. And uh, just last week, there was a hack of a school district in Southern California that resulted in uh, the uh, school district having to pay millions of dollars to unlock their computers because they weren't taking proper precautions. And there was a hospital the week before on the East Coast that had the exact same situation. And even though the experts will tell you if you get hacked and um, you get compromised and you have ransomware or the bad guys steal information, don't pay the ransom. The reality is that if you're running a business and you've exhausted all other options, you're going to be forced to pay. Mm-hmm. And that's why a lot of cyber insurance companies now, you know, the insurance companies basically have an entire team of people that they rely on when you call them and say, hey, I've been hacked. They have professionals that will negotiate on your behalf with the cyber criminals to try to bring down the ransom. They'll even uh, have uh, public relations experts to tell you how to deal with the, uh, you know, the reputation problems that you might suffer because of the hack being public. 
products. So mm-hmm. it's become a very sophisticated industry. If you don't have cyber insurance, I highly recommend that you contact your broker and see if you can get it. You can call us. We have several cyber insurance options available through, not directly through us. We're not an insurance company, but we have a lot of partnerships that are available. But it's now kind of like any sort of business insurance that you have as a matter of course, if you're running a company, you just need to have cyber insurance. I would imagine at some point they're going to fold the cyber insurance into the business liability insurance. But with this caveat, they may have certain standards for you to get a particular rate. If you are not willing Mm -hmm. to invest in particular defensive technologies, your rate is going to be higher. And if you get hit with a cyberware attack and a ransomware attack, and the insurance company has to pay out, and it's determined later that you weren't doing all that you could do to harden your systems, two things could happen. The carrier will drop you, or your rates will go up substantially the next time around. And your claim can be denied. One of the things that a lot of people don't understand is that cyber insurance is great after the fact, but you basically have to spend the money first to basically fix the problem, and then you'll get reimbursed when you file a claim. Okay. So if you get a ransomware attack and somebody wants a million dollars, you can't go to your insurance company and say, hey, I need a million dollars. They'll say, no, you first pay the million dollars, then you file a claim and we'll give it to you. So that surprises a lot of people because they think, well, the incident has happened. I should be able to file the claim right away. But that's not the way insurance works. Even when, you know, think about having an accident in your car, they have to examine the car and determine how much you should get and then you get it back. But they're not going to buy you a new car and then figure out how much you really should be getting. So it's important that people understand that cyber insurance isn't necessarily the most important aspect. It's, It's a fallback, but you need to do all the things you should be doing to protect yourself to avoid ever having to use it. So if you want some great advice on what to do, especially during this month of October, Cybersecurity Awareness Month, contact Luis Alvarez or the iTeam at the Alvarez Technology Group. Online, you'll find them at alvareztg.com, at alvareztg is the Twitter handle, and Luis, the toll-free number for the iTeam. Give us a call at 866-78-ITEAM, that's 866-784-8326.